Hello everybody, this is Gijs again with another review and I hope you are doing well. Um, this time it is the review of the Abisko Dome 2 from Fjall Raven, a two-person dome tent for four seasons. And since it is for four seasons, let's move over to the snow in Austria. So, before I can show you how to pitch the tent in the snow, of course I need to clear some space. And that's just a matter of getting the snow really compact. First I do this always with my boots and then I take my mattress and put it on there so that you get a nice flat spot. Well, well this should be big enough. Now let's get the tent and I'll show you exactly what's in the bag. So let's have a look what's inside the stuff bag. Um, a thing that Fjell often does is make a stuff bag where you can put the poles on the outside and they are well basically between the compression steps but then you might lose them if you put your tent on the outside of your backpack and as you can see there is a little clip here and then you've got the poles um, they are duck feather lights and so greens I think they are 10 millimeters uh, in thickness so that's the poles then if we go into the bag itself and it's a very easy system just pull and open it um, and there is this very big funnel, tunnel, how you like to call this. Um, this gives a lot of extra space if you want to store, for example, a sleeping bag or maybe um, a ground sheet of floor uh, in this as well. Then the stuff bag itself, I already explained, explained the clip and the compression bag. What I also do like is that there is some sort of a tutorial in there uh, that explains how to pitch the tent and a bit about the materials. Um, and inside, and it's well, it's probably no, not many tent manufacturers do it. Um, there is a decent repair kit um, given with it, with a bit of seam seal, some repair wire, um, some stitching stuff, and some really decent repair material for the outside of your tent. And that goes neatly in here. And it's a super lightweight tent. Uh, for a four season one, so it's quite good that they give some repair stuff there. So that's the stuff bag. Then the poles, uh, the poles, the pegs. The pegs they are also from Duck and there are 18 of them. The V shaped ones um, with a little piece of wire on there so you can pull it out of the ground quite easily or you can attach it to something. Uh, as you can see I've been using these in Sweden there's quite some dirt on it and of course at home in the Netherlands and this is not really the pack for winter snowy conditions but the snow is not that deep uh, so I'll just give it a try and it's totally um, there's no wind at all so I probably don't even need them uh, and then there is of course the tent in this case I've left the fly sheet and the inner tent um, in one piece because that makes pitching if you want to do it really quick way easier but the good thing is of course that if you want to separate you can separate both of them so if you are traveling together and you want to divide the weight um, equal then you can take uh, the outer or the fly sheet and the inner tent separate um, the good thing is you can also remove the inner tent and use it separately um, Fjall Raven also sells a really nice mesh uh, inner tent for this one to use in summer conditions but this is a four season tent um, so I've been using it well, almost all year around summer holidays in Sweden it was very very hot uh, but I still use it like this and I pitched the inner tent basically with the poles and a well sort of smart construction I invented myself on the spot but uh, now let's pitch the tent so and now with this beautiful sun coming I will hurry up and pitch the tent first where are my packs there are my packs put that one there that one there first we assemble the poles of course and the poles they are all in the same length so that's easy, but I forgot to tell you that there is of course a uh, repair pole, a real one, not only a piece like in the other half, but a real pole to repair it. If you have one damaged, then this is also so simple. You always have to be a bit careful when it's in the snow that you don't get the connectors filled with snow because then, well, first you might not get them together again 
and they might freeze if you get too much snow in there. But temperature wise it's not too bad today and oh what a lovely sun. And I must say this is the first video that I shoot in winter circumstances with a lot of snow and I must say this is quite tempting to do. Okay for so far the poles get them a bit out of the way. Now my flat surface and because I already prepared the tent. Okay let's find the one. There is one. Let's get rid of the snow. But I choose a spot. Now let's have a look, where do I want the entrance? Uh, basically, there's the trail to the toilet. This is where the sun is, so I'll have the entrance here. Um, and to be honest, because it's so, well, not windy, um, this is basically all I have to do. Um, if I would pitch this on a normal ground or with windy conditions, I would peg it. But now, if I put my stuff in here, no problem whatsoever. Let's talk a bit about the material uh, the Abisco Dome 2 is made of. Um, the fly sheet, it's a very lightweight 20 denier, that's the thickness, ripstop polyamide. Um, ripstop means of course that if you get a puncture in it, it won't tear uh, further. And most of the times if you've got a small hole, small puncture, you can just use your hands and get the fibers closing the gap actually. But um, as you can see the lower part is a different color of green brownish uh, and this is actually a thicker material. It's a 40 denier uh, polyamide, also of course a ripstop. And that's pretty clever because this is the part that's always touching the ground so that has the most wear and tear probably. Um, so they make the lightweight upper and a very strong lower. Um, well. In the last year that I've been using this tent, um, I went out hiking one day and my tent was not on a spot like this because there was no snow in Scandinavia in the summer of course, but it was quite similar and I just went out for a day hike and when I came back um, something funny happened because on the other side of the tent um, there are some really nice crawl marks and I can see them also on the inner side of the tent. Uh, so probably some kind of maybe a squirrel or maybe a cat has been trying to get into the tent and it didn't succeed. And I can see really little tiny holes. Um, and they've been made with quite some force because well, some are quite big. But when you just take your fingers and you rub the material and you really get the fibers back in place, uh, the most part of the hole is basically uh, repaired again. But then Fjallraven of course gives this really nice repair kit, so I put some uh, patches on them to keep the tent waterproof during the rain. Um, but it's still very, very usable. It doesn't really damage the tent. Um, then, well, the inside, um, the inner tent, that's a 50 denier uh, ripstop polyamide. Um, that's even lighter though. Uh, it's got a water repellent coating, so if you've got some condensation drops, it will um, roll off the material itself, which is pretty uh, neat. Then the floor, that's also a rips of polyamide, but it's a 40 denier uh, thickness and it has a polyurethane coating uh, to prevent water from getting into it. Um, then that was material wise, now let's go into the details of the tent itself. On the top of the fell you can see a sort of head. It's actually a second layer of fabric and that's there for a reason. Let me get this loose and I'll show you what the function is. Um, this is basically the rain protection to the ventilation openings here. You see the mesh uh, triangles, there's one on the other side as well. So now you have with dry weather the possibility to take the head away and get more ventilation from beneath the tent going up like the chimney effect. Um, so this is very clever. You can also see that the poles are running through quite large wide sleeves and that's done for a reason. Because in winter conditions, um, when you expect a lot of snow, you know, a dome construction is pretty strong by itself. But Fjallraven made this so you can put a second set of poles in there. Also the cup holders at the 
other end of the of the ends of the poles they've got two uh, holes to put the second pole in so you can really make your roof stronger in winter conditions um, the pole sleeves are well basically cut in half because this is easier if you want to pitch the tent and they are color coded so if you do this at night with your headlamp on you can easily find that this one has to go into that one and you don't make the mistake by getting it in here which is clever as well what i also do like is that the cap because it's not a symmetrical design um, it needs to be fit in one place so it's color coded on two of these they correspond 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 together uh, so it's easy to get it back in place again and what i like um, if you've got cold hands or you do this with gloves because this is quite fiddly you put the rope in there first and this goes practically by itself and this is a very good way of dealing with um, design in cold weather okay let's continue what makes the abisco a real four season tent is the fact that all the sides they go really down to the ground and well here i've buried the lower part a bit in the snow they're not really snow skirts but this way it works as well that's the benefit of of course the stronger material uh, there like this you keep the warmth in the cold out and this makes it also a bit more wind resistant um, wind resistancy is very good on on the fjell dome tents because they have these guidelines with two attachment points there are two on uh, every pole um, they're very easy to adjust they're really long so they divide the forces very well uh, and they are reflective so if you are out for a wee in the night um, and you have your headlamp you will see the reflective uh, uh, guidelines yeah, so you won't stumble over it um, i talked already about the top ventilation well on the lower part we have those two large ventilation openings um, also guidelines to hold it and this is also of course uh, to um, make the tents better resistant to wind on the inside there is a good mesh and you can close the uh, mesh as well so if it's really cold um, you keep it closed um, then on the inside of this tent um, the inner tent has got a mesh window as well and there you can open the mesh and if you've got snow between the fly sheet and the inner tent you can take your cup or a pan and you can scoop some snow out of it and if you want if the weather is really foul you can use your stove be careful um, in the porch to cook some snow basically so you can have a drink or make something to eat um, that this is not a real expedition tent proves the fact that there is no connection between the inner and the outer tent or a funnel or a tunnel how you call this so you can scoop really from the inner tent directly into the outer tent in snow some um, expedition tents they have here also a big zipper in the in the in the mesh so you can do that this one doesn't have that i see that i have to hurry because my batteries are getting really really fast low empty with this kind of weather um, and i didn't bring a heat pack stupid me the entrance it is being hauled down with a really nice um, fixture that's also very usable when your hands are pretty cold so that's a pro and as you can see on the inside the inner tent is fixed to the fly sheet with this sort of construction um, and what i tried um, in my summer holidays in scandinavia when it was really warm is just to pitch the tent using these loops and the existing poles not buying really the um, extra set from fjell and well as long as you can push your poles into the ground um, this works as well so you can use the inner tent solo without basically paying anything extra um, so that's a good feature then let's get into the tent itself um, one thing is uh, and i didn't mention this i think it, this is a freestanding dome most of them are uh, and that's pretty easy because i can just take the tent and put it somewhere else so if i discover that my my mattress is lying on a rock just pick up the tent if you didn't peg it down yet and place it somewhere else but because this um dome construction in this in this respect um, the tent has got all these wires and there's one and there goes one under the tent that's just to get the poles in the right shape um, this is something you have to be aware of because if you accidentally took the 
in a tent out for what reason whatsoever and it's dark and you want to pitch the tent quite fast you can make quite a lot of mistakes um, with these ropes so be careful with this um, it is also i've discovered well a sort of a um, trip wire if you're not really careful but hey if you want a freestanding dome tent this is in this case how it's done okay now let's get into um, the details of the inner tent the living space as you can see the porch uh, this is about 80 85 centimeters that's what I measure depending on how much you stretch it um, this is space enough for uh, a large backpack on both sides because it's a totally symmetrical tent in this, this respect uh, so there's storage for bike panniers backpacks that kind of stuff and it's even quite good if the weather is really foul to um, use a cooker in here uh, but don't use that one because it's pretty high with that kind of gas at the moment so use a low one and be very careful of course if you do this in a tent what I do like is that the uh, flooring is high especially when you're well in snowy conditions or in, in wetlands uh, it's about if the, 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 the surface is totally level the height of the bathtub construction is about 14 centimeters and that's high enough for most wet uh, conditions so that's a pro now let's get in okay I'm not going to be bothered with uh, getting my shoes off because I need to be outdoors anyway and I don't want to get my feet wet um, as you can see it's quite a large inner tent the width is 130 centimeters so that's big enough for two adults that are not too small then the length is 220 centimeters so that's quite good as well um, if you're a tall person this is really a tent for you um, because it's a symmetrical tent there is one door on this side and there's another door on this side and I will show you that of course behind the there is always a two-way zipper uh, when you open the first door you can see there is mesh to keep the mosquitoes out and if I open this one well I'm into the second porch which is good because if there are two of you then if one wants to go to the toilet well the left one goes that side and the other one goes that side that's convenient um, the height of the inner tent is uh, about a meter but there is a small nice gear loft in there so that limits your headspace a bit down to 90 centimeters depending on what you put onto it for me this is always my perfect storage uh, space for my socks if i've been walking the whole day they're always a bit slightly damp that's a really nice spot to um, let them dry and it's detachable as well so that's also a pro then um, as i mentioned from the outside this was the ventilation that i was talking about you can see the mesh and there is the cover with a zipper so if I don't want the cold uh, to enter the tent or the warm to leave the tent I can close this one as well but I can also uh, let me try it this way open the mesh and this is what I meant if I take my cup now I can um, scoop some snow and I can do it there for cooking but now let's close it oh that was the different zipper and if the camera moves that's because it's on the ground of the sheet and I see that the snow is kind of moving a bit um, well there is on every corner and that's probably the last thing I can say about the inner tent uh, every corner like here has a point where you can did you see that where you can store stuff uh, in my case it's always my glasses so it's also quite well equipped and I don't know if you if I can show this let me get the GoPro and I'll try to make this clear to you because when I was talking about those animal feet you see that it's been climbing from here to there to there and it went totally over the tent nothing to be done but that's the big benefit of a let's put it there that's the big benefit of um, modern ripstop nylons nylons uh, polyameters in this case excuse me but of the ripstop fabrics that if you get a puncture in it it won't tear the whole way down and that was with the old-fashioned tents that was quite often the case and that meant meant ruining your whole tent 
Okay, I think I've covered everything about the Fjallraven Abisko Dome 2. Let's head on to the conclusion. On to the conclusion, how do I rate the Fjallraven Abisko Dome 2? Well, I think it is a pretty good tent. Um, the weight of 3400 grams is fine for a four season tent for two persons. Um, Fjall Raven has chosen really nice materials. The very thin upper layer and where it hits the ground you take the thicker layer. The poles have proven to be very very sturdy, the guidelines very practical and the tent is totally totally windproof and waterproof and that this one got damaged by a cat a squirrel or whatsoever it do did not harm the water uh, proofness of the tent itself and I like the fact that they actually give a decent repair set with the tent um, the inside space is big enough for two adults and the headroom space is even fine with one meter um, that said there's one thing that I don't really like and that is the way the guidelines are stored. Well, actually they are not stored. So if you pack your tent together again, be very careful so to put the guidelines in a logical way back into the tent. Because otherwise when you unpack it in a sort of haste, you will get all wires mangled up together. So be careful with this. So the price, it's 899 euros and 95 cents, which I think is a very decent price for such a high quality tent. And therefore I rate the Fjell Raven Abisko Dome 2 at the full five stars. I hope this review was useful to you and if it was, please leave a comment below and give it a like. And if you've not done so yet, please subscribe to my channel because I'm an independent reviewer and I really need your support. So please hit the subscribe button and push the alarm bell so you know when I uploaded a new video. And yes, I say I'm totally independent and I'm wearing a Fjell Raven hat with a Fjell Raven review. That's quite stupid, but I have been wearing this one almost for 10 years now and this is just my favorite hat and that's why I'm wearing it. Not because somebody is paying me. So please, if you support independent reviewing, Follow me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram and like my Facebook page. Many, many thanks in advance. And for now, enjoy the outdoors. Ciao. I know I will.